Uh, we would like defence, please. No worries. Uh, we'll start down there. Okay. Yeah. Karen, Karen, I've got Karen Baker from Chaos WA. Karen, you've chosen defence uh, for the first uh, game. What is the strategy behind that? Um, we prefer to come out on defence, really. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we're looking forward to a really hotly contested game. We've had some really good matchups against Hot Chili in the past. So we're looking for another one of those this time. Great, that sounds really exciting. And you've played them before. Anything you want to um, think about in terms of playing differently or the same, given that this is a team that you've played? We know that um, Hot Chili bring a lot of grit and a never give up attitude. So we're just going to match that mindset and um, play our best today. We've been cooking up some things up behind the border in WA and we can't wait to try it out. Oh, thank you, Karen. Can't wait to see it. Good luck for the game. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm here with Evie Miller, one of the captains of uh, this Chile team. Uh, Evie, uh, Chile are expanding into a women's team. This is what the third season now. I think it's the fourth season this season. Um, we've re yeah, we've been really trying to grow as a club, just across the men's and the women's. We're a young squad, but we're looking into the future and really building this season. So it's very exciting. Yeah. Now, what, how do you approach a game where you know you haven't seen chaos in a few years? <laughs> How do you approach this game? Um, I think we just do what we know um, and we stick to it and we just play some really good frisbee. Yeah. All right, good luck for the match. Thank you for your time. Yeah, no We're going to go back to your commentators, Simon Talbot and Beck Walbridge. Thank you, Daniel and Amy. Exciting game here. Yep, second game for the day. Day five of the Australian Ultimate Championships. We're in the women's division, division one between Chaos playing out of Western Australia and Spicy Chili out of Melbourne. Let's take a look at the teams. So Spicy Chili, their third go round at Nationals. We're going to keep an eye on their captain number 12, Evie Miller, one of their big throwers uh, on offense and also good on defense. Christina Van, number 16, the workhorse of this team, will just be cutting constantly and getting open plenty of times. And 84, Vicky Sue, she's been training with the team, but this is the first one she's been able to make. A uh, veteran college player from the US, hoping to make an impact on the women's division at this tournament. Let's take a look at Chaos now. So very excited to see Chaos here a couple of years in, uh, well, lockdown by their PM. Um, <laughs> no, not their PM, sorry. Anyway, so we've got a couple of players who have been playing for a while with this team. So we've got number 59, Steph Mayer. She's um, played for a while with them. Sarah Brereton, who will be controlling a lot of the play. Um, we've got Annie Jessup, who is a speed demon. So watch her just ripping up the field. Um, Karen Baker, who has been the veteran of that team, not played with Chaos for very long, but has been around Ultimate for a very, very long time. Um, and so has will bring a lot of knowledge to a fairly young and new team. So a few unknowns on this team that we just haven't seen play. Being a Victorian myself, Simon, you're the same. And um, we haven't really had a chance to really see these newer players and what they're capable of. So I'm guessing there are going to be a few names we get to know pretty quickly yeah. in this game. Both teams known for their fast and furious offense they big risk takers not not much interest in being conservative they go hard or go home absolutely and i know that chaos similar to their male counterparts like a bit of a physical game um and happy to go after everything play a very aggressive style of ultimate traditionally uh, yes. <laughs> okay it's been rebuilding the last couple of years they finished second in 2014 and also attended the World Ultimate Club Championships in the meantime as well in the women's division. Spicy Chili, their best finish at national, sixth last year. For a fairly new team, that's yeah. a pretty good effort. And again, they're also cycling through lots of new players at this tournament, making their Division One debut. So Baker is going to get our first pull going, get this game underway. Going to be a short-ish pull, but pinning them to the sideline. So in pretty good position, that's landed out of bounds, so Van, the signal, the brick. So brick is when the disc goes out on the full and you can either take it on the sideline or you can come, you'll see there's an X on the field at either end. So you take it into that X and you get to bring it in. Yeah, if they're isolating Julia Kabai in the middle there, as well as Kat Buxer, but Van can't see either of them for the defense. So heads to Miller, Miller to Davey. It's through her fingers, but Batista's had a, another go at it, cleaned up the scraps. I find Kabai now. Van puts it out to the advantage of Miller, but just a little bit too much on it. They've tried to go, have tried to go at a pace. They, I think they need to ease into a bit. So, but we'll call it nerves. 
It's their first game for the day for both these teams. Both teams yet to register a win. Running with a hex setup, it looks like. Francois. Oh, yep. great D there. Puts it too wide. I think that was Van there that just read that out of the hand. Getting it ahead. So Batista walking to the disc, shouting, pointing. They've isolated Kabai one on one. Puts it out to her advantage. Has a bit of work to do. Right idea, just a bit too much on the throw. Interesting O setups in both teams. We'll get to talk a bit about that. But yeah. They're running with that hexagonal formation again, Chaos. Bit of a new offense we haven't seen in Australia very often. Getting some traction as a uh, new offensive style in Europe. And that's a big throw out from Chris and Chai looking for Natasha May to be the end of it. High floating, but May's got good possession. Slip over from the receiver there, so she has to look backwards. Runs out of time, O'Connor. Pops a little bit of bump, plays through it. Baker. And a pick's been called on the stack, so. A pick being when uh, a player, can be any player from either team, gets in the way of a defender from chasing their player. Centre of screen, those three players there. There's the inside shot. It's gone too high. Davies had to go early, and one, two goes at it. Francois can't reel it in. So another go for Spicy Chili. That end zone offense looked uh, like a different setup as well. So it's mm. fairly innovative styles in both teams here. It's going to be a bit of fun to watch this one. So Chili run with a split stack. So they've got Buxa and Kabai. Create a little two-on-two -two battle on this near side of the field. Buxas again tried to shoot that 45-degree pass to Miller. Has missed and Chaos get another go at offense. Cut starting from the back from Targa there. She's got the pace. Blast straight through past the defender. Just not quite any reaction at all. And That's a break there. Yep, first goal for the game is goes to Chaos. So both teams, they're playing very tight defense and the offense really struggling to find that open space. Um, I mean, the, the tightness meaning that they actually can't just rely on a foot race. They're going to have to do a bit of faking here. So, yep. But I guess, you know, early on in the game, you're learning each other's style. You're learning the speed. You're learning the throws. Yeah. You let them get a couple in, um, or not necessarily a couple in, but you let them, you know, have a bit of a run and while you're watching and you're learning. Yeah. So you see Bruce Wynn, the coach of Spicy Chili in the red shirt there. Getting plenty of instruction. Sarah Barrett and the, the playing coach of Chaos. Be a tactical battle this one as well. Absolutely. Some, I'm not going to call them unconventional because they are quite conventional. Just rarely seen uh, offensive structures. So, Yeah, the Hex is one that kind of has just started to creep its way across the uh, waters <laughs> yeah. down south here. Yeah. Um, and so teams... Having teams who are implementing it, it it's, it's amazing to see what the defense do to try and yeah. stop it because it is so new and, and very different to what has traditionally been done. Yeah, trying to sort of uh, base it a lot more on the movement of the ball in um, football and soccer more so than ultimate, which tends to have borrowed a lot from American football due to its historic roots. Another overshot among the handlers from Spice and Chili. Luca Carbillo straight away gets it going, but another one pass turnover. Miller to set up. Vans wide open on the near side, another overshoot. So Baker's going to pick up the disc now. She's going to walk to it slowly. Allow her cutters to have a breath, slow the pace of this game down, because that's exactly what it needs at the moment. There's been a couple of early turns. Drives the hands off, takes the shot, looking for Leone, and that's drifted out oh, of bounds. Oh, she tries. tried. Great she effort. Tried, tried to toe the line to keep it in bounds, but drag the foot, calls herself out. Christensen. Miller. Chen. Everything heading high side. Van finds space, low side. Couple of fumbles at it. So Luca Cardillo wants to move it quickly. Francois with a nice up the line, leading pass cut. And Liz Chen just swats that out of the air with authority. That was ahead of Rachel DeLuca Cardillo, who provided that. We see a lot of teams really try and attack that sort of near corner just for that 
supposedly easy pass, but it's also it can be easy to crowd it with defense as well. And oh, uh, a wild dude. throw and a wild diving bid there from Steph Marty. Put pressure on that throw and it's done the job. Chaos now have about 15 to go to goal. The only one out this near side, but Baker goes to Deluca Cardillo to the high side. Floaty, some bodies underneath it. But easy catch in the end. Space has opened up that near side. Miller has a go at it. And it's gone straight up. And Batista was not aware that was coming. If there's a uh, little bit of a clip that you should show your newer players about why it's important to know where the disc is at all times, <laughs> that's probably it. And knowing Batista, another veteran of the scene has been around for 10 plus years. will be filthy on herself. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't think that will happen again, Simon. I think that's a one-off... Uh, Opportunity the chaos just got right there. Yeah. It was a risky old shot too from the thrower, just to sort of bomb it into that end zone. As we see that D from the only there, just throwing it literally right over the defender's shoulder. Because if at any point Batista had to check the shoulder, that's an easy block. Yeah, I, I would have maybe put it out to one side just a little bit, but enough. It paid so, off. Yeah. It paid off definitely. So two nil, but. Very back and forth, both teams having given themselves plenty of opportunity. I think I think Baker did really well on that last point on that possession where she took her time slow and slow. Yeah, and that's where that experience, yeah, yes. those years of ultimate, I mean, yeah. a husband that coaches, you know, yeah. like there's the definitely the frisbee, frisbee smarts there yes. to know when the pace maybe needs to change. Nicole Ma with the hand up, quick dry off, sends the ball down. Keeps it low, gets some distance from rolling. Of course, Jilly have to play from where it lands. Foster, Batista, Lee, Lee Ung, Boxer. Plenty running past her. Sue now takes a long shot up, looking for Ung. Has to go high, but drifts over ahead in the end, and nice easy block there for Jen Woods. A few unforced areas here for Chile. Yeah. Breeze has picked up since this morning. It's uh, top of screen to bottom of screen, so a crosswind is going to make any high throw drift, far away, drift away from the intended target, typically. Sabrina Morrow puts the high one up. That's going to drift into the advantage of Buxer, who just takes the easy intercept, so she'll bring it into play. Just over 60, just under 60 from goal. Boom to Sue. Foster. Puts the shot up. Buxer, Batista, a few bodies underneath it. Ma tries to come over the top. I'm getting plenty of touches in this point. Batista looking to the high side, but Sue has absolutely torched the defence. Likes that quick movement there from Chile. They weren't holding on to it. They, they knew that they had the advantage over defence by having that little run, and they just kept using that. That's a hallmark of their offense. They really like those 45 degree leading passes away from the thrower. Teams you'll generally find will, you know, to cut towards the thrower for that sort of bullet pass. But Chile practice a lot those, yeah, leading passes away. Just I think if uh, if Chile can sort out their unforced errors and yep. just um, get tune in that accuracy a little bit, I think we'll have a see a bit of a different side. See that pack right there, Cat Bucks and the youngster. And yeah, this 45 degree leading pass away from the thrower. No defense near her. <laughs> Very difficult to defend if you're not already standing that side of the player. Absolutely. But then you expose the high side of the field. So it's high risk, high reward. Like if you can if you can cover it well. You're done, but you you can't take away everything. You've got to give up something. Hannah Phillips, one of Chile's first-year players. Sends a high fly pull out. Gets good hang time on it. They're going to get pressure on this first throw. Baldonado finds Jessup. Straight across to Brereton. Isolated just basically turned this into a little four-on-four four battle around the disc until they get to about halfway. Then the long shot's going to come up from Brereton. Looking for Jada Callahan, but... Oh, that was perfect. Yeah. That was perfect offensive setup there. Had to go full reach. Again, a different O look. So I don't mind that from Chaos, yeah. having that. I think 
they've got the smarts that they're going to beat Chile in that offensive yeah. play with their handlers. So the, the ones who are confident around the disc, just that quick movement. Once they get in the hands of a particular thrower, they identify Brereton as that thrower. You saw all their, their three deepest players just take off. A good shot over the top to Chan. Foster. Van. Back to Foster. Only looking upfield. Foster's not interested in the lateral movement. Very attacking player. Chatterton. Phillips well covered there. Foster just directing traffic, urging players to come towards her. Puts it out to the advantage of Benenka, who goes over her shoulder. Morrow gets the play going. Woods. O'Callaghan gets it back to Woods. A couple of looks upfield. Morrow putting in the yards at this point and puts the big break side flick out looking for Dominique Elliott. She's waited too long. It has to go. That was a beautiful look to yep. have that sight to be able to see that. Just a little bit too much put on it. And that throw, it just kept going. Oh, is there a call? So it seems like play has stopped on the Very field. Cool. Benenka, I think, has pulled up not okay from that from an earlier contest. She's taken substitution. Julia Kabai is going to come on for her. So when there's an injury call, all players have to stop where they are. Yep. Injured player goes off, and then the team gets to substitute someone who can is uninjured onto the yep. field. The other team as well can if they want to swap over one player. Chaos opting not to do that. That throw from Morrow just kept going. I think. Yeah. Elliot expected it just to sort of drop into her lap and then, oh, hang on. That's <laughs> I think with the wind just coming in, like it's not really wind, more of a breeze that comes and goes. Yep. You can't rely on it. Krauss running a bracket set up on defence. We'll talk about that soon. Goodbye. Phillips. Van. Gone to a more conventional match formation now. Van's gone up the line to Goodbye, who we're seeing get plenty of those cuts. Throws up line to Phillips. Phillips has lost it over her shoulder, but Brereton, it's much easier to read the disc when you're front on rather than running, looking looking behind you. Woods, unguarded. It's a good long look upfield. She doesn't have to... The 10-second count doesn't start till someone's there counting it, it, it loud. Morrow to Woods. Woods winds up, but straight into the lap of Elizabeth Chen. Chatterton. To Van and oh, huge crap from Foster. <laughs> that was almost in slow motion, Simon. Oh, had that size, she braced herself for it and just went. <laughs> She's kept it alive, but Van out of her reach. A smart defense by Brereton there just to get her hand in early. She knew that Van was going to be the target as she sends up to her target, Sabrina Morrow, and a well earned goal for Chaos there to make it 3 1. So the bracket defense there, Beck. So what Chile's uh, running a horizontal formation, which we're seeing from a lot of teams this weekend. It's, I thought it was an offense that had gone out of vogue. but So they had their cutters across the field. And it means that uh, Chaos set up what's called a bracket. Yep, so bracket being that you've got someone who's playing kind of under and taking those cuts that are coming under towards the disc. And then also having someone sitting a little bit deep just to go, hang on, you're not going to get this over us. Yep. And, and and instead of matching up on a particular player, just taking that player as they come into your space. Yeah. Um, just it, it kind of just, it tells the offense, like, if you've got a set play, eh, yeah, you're going to have to think about it again. Yeah, it divides it into basically two two v two battles so rather than just one v one as a traditional matchup you as a pair take another pair of cutters so that when one basically means you can cover two spaces at once and the way around it as we saw hannah phillips and christina van uh do is you just got to absolutely cut through it don't give them a chance to make that switch so move fast enough move direct enough that you're not giving them time to have that communication. Batista gets it going to Miller. About 40 from goal. The throw over floats Christensen, but Davey cleans it up. Buxer. Plenty heading away from her. Sue finds the space close to the disc. Flat direct throw to Miller. 
cuts happening all over the place at the moment, so Millis is going to have to send it up on a high stall count. Yeah, a few too many people all running at the same time. Yeah, Sue Francois, they look nice and tidy early, like very deliberate cuts, timing, movement, order. But then once you go through a few cycles of that, it's very easy to lose what order you were in. Was I fourth? Was I fifth? Yeah. So the tech setup, they've got one throw isolated in the middle, and the idea is just to keep the disc moving quickly, but Shelly's defense seems to be all over it, and throw perfectly put in between both those players, so if they thought it was to each other, Miller gets it ahead of DeLuca Cardillo. Looks to the high side, steps out, gets it out going, Batista's obliged for that throw, fire from goal. Big loopy over the top, into the back corner, the Evie Miller Miller there, <laughs> sweeping it up, hey. <laughs> so much better offense there from, sorry, much better execution of their offense. Yes, there from correct. We've seen yeah. their plan the whole time. And it was a few unsteady throws in the first 15 minutes of the game. But they've got, they've ironed them out. They've got them out of the system Absolutely. now. They've, they're back in playing what they're comfortable with. As we it's see. interesting. Uh, some teams, the... Uh, live stream can be a huge advantage and they come out firing, fired up, adrenaline on high. Some teams they need, get the nerves out early. Head down to Amy Chang on the sideline. It's a quick injury update for number four on Spicy Chili. She was a little confounded when she hit the ground and took an injury call, but she's now back on the field. Yeah. Michaela Beninka there, the player. And sometimes that's what you do. Early in the game, you can take that sub if you've hit the ground, if you've hit the deck and God, oh, that was a bit of a mess. It's good to take the injury sub to work and then work out if you're okay. Absolutely. Try and play through it. You can make things worse. And, you know, day two of a four-day tournament, the last thing you want to do, I guess, for your team and for yourself as that pull lands out of bounds is, yeah, cook yourself before you need to. Absolutely. You don't want to push it to the point where you're out for the next two days. Yeah, but as you see... Yeah, Beninka's back on the field now. She's yep, going to be marking the disc. Yeah, checked herself out. Good matchup for her and Jessup. But as we see, Sabrina Morrow there just to the right of screen. She's probably going to be the target here. One-on-one -on -one with Van. Great throw to her advantage. Pops it up. Looking for Brereton. Jess Chatterton getting underneath it. <laughs> Stellar play. That was textbook perfect, really, wasn't it there? Brereton, like... Again, if you're a young player looking for tips, I want you to rewind this clip and watch it about 10 times because what Brereton did perfectly, as you see on the replay, she gave up a little bit in height to her defender, Jess Chatterton. She did what she called runner under the disc. So Brereton, as you see, just a simple two-pass offense. So it's to the advantage of Morrow. Watch what Brereton does. She'll run basically underneath the flight path of the disc Chatterton followed her, and then she angled back. Yeah, she back. also slowed down a yeah. little bit. She's like, oh, okay, I'm, I need to time this just right. I'm going to slow down, run towards you a little bit so you think this is where yes. I'm going to attack. Yes. And then I'm going to take a couple of steps back because that's did. where that's it's going to land. Yes. Yeah. Just. That's experience yeah. there. I, yeah, I got to a point in my career, Simon, where I had <laughs> to play smarter rather than yes. fitter. And I think... Uh, that's a perfect example of Sarah doing that and recognising she had a lesser experienced player against her. Yeah. And if you're a shorter player worried about uh, being not being able to beat tall players, that's how you do it. Absolutely. Miller winds up looking for Goodbye, who has just been able to do what she wants so far in this game. She's got Davey 1v1 in the end zone. Doesn't look. Decides to wait and go backwards. Miller. There we go. Oh, oh. she's gone to Bucks a bit. Oh, perfect offence. That was. Again, just... That execution. I know it's impolite to talk about age, but <laughs> this uh, matchup here, Bucks versus Baker. What's the gap there? Uh, <laughs> 20 plus. Yeah, absolutely. I'll put it there and I'll <laughs> go into details. <laughs> to Luca Carbillo. Woods has to work for it. And sorry, that was uh, O'Connor. A little last minute bid there. Yeah, good to go for those ones. Again, you don't know what you can get unless you go for everything. So Batista to restart play for Chile. About 35 from goal. Puts the big wind up, but Gianna Leone, you can see her shaking her hand there. She got a massive piece of that one. Yeah, I think she only had eyes for that, didn't yeah, she? Yeah. Doluca Carbillo. 
across. Much cleaner pass to O'Connor. And yeah, foul caught on the throw. Uncontested straight away from Kambai. So we've uh, seen Chaos go to a more traditional. I think they've isolated three handlers back, but they'll look to their cutters now. And not a bad look, just not great execution that throw. They're looking for Leone because her defender was on that high side. Miller. Bucks her M. Kabai heading towards her. Seeks out Kat Buxer. Kabai. Again, got David in the end zone. Heads backwards. Miller. Got Sue coming towards her, but oh. Leone. That great was, vision. Uh, yeah, great vision by Leone to realise the Chile throws are telegraphing their throws too much. We'll come back to that in a moment. Deluca Cardillo floats it out to the advantage of O'Connor. So there's not, we've only got one layout in me per point. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit too far. Miller just chucks that one up and out there because, uh, oh, no, Davey's got to go. <laughs> and not the throw Kavai wanted, I think. She's shaking her hand going, that's, oh, that is not what I was trying to do. But that throw from Miller, Kavai can read everything. So Absolutely. Undefended, so it doesn't matter what you throw. Just get it over to her. Yep. Let her take care of it. A Kabai, oh, just <laughs> nearly gets fingers to that one. With Deluca Cardillo, got Leone heading long. Leone's going to have to do some work here. It is floating up. Great effort. Great effort to run that down. Yeah. Now, this point's gone on for a little bit, um, meaning that probably legs are going to get a little bit tighter. Wouldn't be surprised to see a timeout called here. Probably not by Batista, but if there's another possession or two. By Teleco from their throws, I think. Chili throws are making it very, very obvious what they want to do. Yes. Like their actions and their looks. And it means that, that heads up defending from Chaos. So we see Deluca Cardillo floated up this time. Leone's got a good set. Comes around the front of Batista. And claims the goal that time. So 5-2. Yep. Chaos's way. It's interesting. I've been watching the um, the way that Chaos have been marking the disc um, in front of Chile. And they're really, they're playing a little bit flatter. So they're not allowing Chile to get what we call an inside break. Yes. So that's a um, traditionally like a really narrow break pass. They're allowing that around uh, breakthrough if needed. But we haven't seen Chile take advantage of that yet. Yep. Chile don't seem to be wanting to aggressively attack that break side. The only times that Chile have tried it is that little inside. Chaos has recognised that and they're stopping it. So they're playing quite a flat in front mark rather than stopping that around. And I think for Chile to get on the advantage side here, they could maybe two a couple of those arounds and swing the play to the other side of the field to really open it up um, and get that quick movement that they like. Yeah. Okay, it's very much a battle of wills at the moment. The score is 5-2. I wouldn't say either team's got like a physical athletic ascendancy over the other or even a skillful one. But... Chaos are winning the tactical battle. And that's where the that's where the difference is at the moment. Elizabeth Chen to start play. Sanders it to Foster. Too high. Foster can't reel it in, and so Chaos has a shot 20 from goal. Morrow picks it up to move quickly. Ooh. Jessup has to double back. Call there. Yeah, foul, foul. call. Yep. Yep. Um, so being self-umpired, obviously players, they make their own calls. And so what's happened is as she's throwing that, she's made contact with the defender. Yep. So she calls it. They have a bit of a chat. I think the defender's going, yeah, yeah. I, I hit you. <laughs> August just accepted that call. So. Yeah, so that means the stall count goes back down to zero. Yeah. Gets it to Jessup anyway. Has a good long look at that high side. Jen Woods obliges heading deep into that corner. Worried she about had it. time. Worried about where her feet were. Yep, she had time <laughs> to re catch that. Time to read that and, yep. Catch first, everything else later. Absolutely. You can see she had the cone in the corner of her eye and... The second your focus is away from that disc, it could do strange things in the air. Chatterton, 64 from goal. Yep, Chaos has got everything well covered here. She just has to send it up into space and hope for the best. And so injury, injury called. Who's? Chaos, injury looks like a oh. ankle. Yep. So that's that can be the risk with wet, yeah. soggy fields is oh. that quick change of direction sometimes the boots can get stuck yeah. 
So hopefully that's just a bit of a twinge and she'll be all right. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to you with that. Poor Dominique Elliott was left just standing there on one foot saying, um, I can't wait there. Can someone <laughs> help? <laughs> um, so then Chaos gets to bring in a different player. Yeah, it's going to go back to Chatterton because the injury call does stop play. But it is going to be a high stall count. So I, oh, it's going to be, you can see Foster sort of top middle. She's going to have to be the target. She's the only sort of kind of open play here. And rain is starting to spit and spatter now. Yep. Oh, boy, this is trouble. Well, there we go. Foster finds the space, swings it across straight away to Phillips. And this is what you were talking about, Beck. They've got to get that lateral movement happening a lot more aggressively if they need to progress. Here we go. Chen, Chatterton, Phillips. Oh, straight through the gap. Straight through the hands of Phillips. That rain, I think, might have just made that slippery. Yeah. And a little bit of wind as well now. And it's kind yep. of just that sudden little push of wind every now and then. It's not a consistent breeze. Yeah, Jessup with the Disney. Inside shot tomorrow. Has time to read it. Sends it out. This, oh, Brereton, that is rare. <laughs> yeah, she's not going to be happy about that one. Too much time to think about it. It did dip down at the very last second. She thought she was going to catch it, you know, right in her lap, and then it's just dropped to her knees. Yeah. You know, having to get down. Now, that wind has that picked up, picked Simon, up. so it's coming down towards the bottom of your screen across field. So that might change up a bit of defensive strategy here. You can probably hear it through our effects mic as well. Foster. Looks for Chan Chan again. Just can't get that traction on the ground. Jessen wants to restart quickly because she's got Jen Woods in that top corner. But again, looks lateral. Burriton playing behind the disc now. Foster, great defensive coverage there at the bottom of the screen. But Morrow finds time and space to get it to Woods. Woods right on the doorstep now. Good discipline to not try and get that one throw for a goal. Morrow winds up. Watch for this top corner. There's plenty of space and players there now. Now, do you call a timeout as Chile? I... Mm, mm, mm. Six they're two. Not. They're not. I would. I would have. <laughs> I probably would have a point to go. <laughs> uh. But so well earned that goal from Chaos. Like they, they're still playing their offense with the kind of discipline you need in this weather. They're not trying to change anything they're doing. They're doing what they are doing, but just harder and with more focus. Well, yeah, and I feel like harder, but. Yeah, I feel like Chile, are, uh, they, they're feeling the conditions, they're feeling the pressure, and they're playing a bit of a frantic style of ultimate. And you can almost, you can feel it like on the, on the sideline here that they're, they're going, oh, we've got to get this one. And, and yeah. so it seems like there's this real franticness to score every time they're on offense. It's not a calm offense at all at the moment. And I think that Chile really needs to take control back in this game and, and just know that they've got the skills because they do have the skills. Mm and um, just play their style. Easier said than done. Yes. I wouldn't be surprised. Chaos will probably run a zone here. I think now with that wind up, they'll try and pin them down to this near sideline to make any throws, any of those lateral throws, tough into the wind. Dixon, yep. Throws has gone way too far. Van disappointed with herself. Here, Karen Baker calling for a vertical stack, so a central formation. Chile really trying to take care of those upfield cuts, but one's got out the back. That's Targa at the oh, end. Oh, that's yep. just in. Just in. Inako Tagar with her first goal. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's pretty excited about it. Absolutely. <laughs> <with> it. <laughs> Look at that celebration. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Out. The throwing from Chaos there, you wouldn't think it's windy at the moment. No, not at all. <laughs> not at flat, all. Flat, direct, no shape whatsoever. Yeah, and look, it it, it seems like the, the wind is in the favours of uh, Chaos a little bit, but gosh, they, they, Chile just seems to be on the back foot defensively. Yeah. So you see, Kristen Chai, that was the throw. Yeah, millimetre Again, perfect. Look, look at that. You see, Takashi took a very quick look at the line and goes, right, okay, I'm, I'm kind of about five metres away, so I need to take this kind of early. So, didn't, again, it's catch first, everything else later, but if you're going to look at the line, do it early. Absolutely. And then just bring it down. 
quite Yeah, now we've got an update way. from Amy from the Chaos sideline. We're going to pass over to Amy. Got an injury update from number six on Chaos. She's taking herself off with a recurring ankle injury, but is looking to put herself back on once it starts feeling better. Oh, that's good to hear. So glad that she's doing all right. I'm sure the people back home will be pleased to hear that. Dominique Elliott, very tough player. Sue playing behind the desk now. Goodbye. Bucks her. That wind's picked up again, Had Simon. Low, moves it quickly to Van. Goodbye. Right on the sideline, about 10 from goal. So has a quick look at Sue. She's got... Just forced that a little bit. She felt a, <laughs> felt a bit of a nudge behind her. And uh, Emma Baldonado, the defender, said, is, uh, is that a problem? <laughs> Sue's just going, nah, we're good. <laughs> Have a bit of a laugh about it. Jessup deep in their own end zone. And, yep, just... I think Brereton juke back one way too many. Sue wants to move it quickly and has called Ooh. a time Would you – why – okay, why rush to the disc, pick it up to then call a timeout? When it's hit the ground, you've got time yep. to get people set up. The disc can stay on the ground for, what is it, 20 seconds? Is yep. like at, so long as someone is walking at it at a reasonable pace. I think it's 20 if it's out of bounds. 10 okay, so 10. But still, 10 yep. seconds is a while to set yourselves up. Yep. I think we can put that down to, again, we mentioned before that this is Sue's first time with the team. I think she was expecting everyone to be like, oh, let's go, let's yep. go, give a go. They looked up and realised oh. that other teammates are ready. <laughs> yeah. And going, oh, hang on, we better, yep. <laughs> we better do something here. So, unsure if there was a stall count on at all. I think there may have been a couple of counts. Yep. Um, so, it'll be interesting to see here what happens. Goodbye, 1v1, surely. Yeah, I mean, the advantage would be a 1v1, but I, I would be looking at who the opponent is. True. Um, because there are some very smart, quick heads on Chaos, yeah. and I think that it would be worth looking at the matchups and making decisions, but difficult to do because offense goes and sets themselves up. They then must remain stationary while defense get to do their thing. So it's all good and well to say, yeah. oh, we're going to isolate this one player, but then you look at who's on them and you have to change your mind. All, all of a sudden you've got five players surrounding them. Exactly. So... So it's, yeah. It Decoy 1v1. Put out another player and have Kabai from the stack. Oh, look at you go. It's back and backing Sue for the throw. She can get that upwind. Now, Amy was listening in on the chilly uh, timeout circle. So let's hear from Amy. We've got the coach in the timeout bringing out the whiteboard and it's strategy, strategy, strategy from Chile. Awesome. Yep. Now, Simon, yes. I think you might be right. Yep. They've surrounded. <laughs> it's 1v1, playing close, but they've surrounded. As you said, like with defence. Hit this low side, Miller to Batista. That's what you've got to do. Low side, low side, low side. Come on, Vicky. There we go. Great defence by Chaos. This is, they've absolutely shut this all the way down. There we go. Batista on the low side now. Curtis heading away from it. Curtis really clogged that high side, which is... Sue's had to work for it. She's gone over the top of Batista, but... Well done by Chaos there. They yep. they saw what the plan was, and they went, nah. Yep, they've ruined Chili's day doing that, and Jess has put it up long to Nicole Ma. No count yet. Has a long time to get rid of it. Happy to wait for all the cutters to get ahead of her, but she's overthrown that. Right decision. Yeah, she's not happy with herself yep. there. Such a gainer, such yep. a massive gainer, and then unfortunately to throw that away. Batista. To Van. Both the wind and the rain have picked up. This is going to be difficult. And yeah, Bucks has slipped and put that one down. Chaos have a much shorter range now to goal. Only about 12, not even 20, bang on 20 metres to get to goal. Got all their cutters clustered together. So they'll try and work it to maybe five, ten metres out and put it over the back, I think. Raritan. O'Callaghan. Pick call. So they've kept a few players out of the end zone to try and open up a bit more space for cutters. So they seem a bit scrambled at the moment, those three cutters in the end zone. You'll see them close in centrally, then one of them break back out, probably to that right side. There we go. That's the move, but... Those, in these conditions, those 45 degree throws away from the, th the away from the thrower, uh, I nearly swore. They are very, 
difficult. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to emphasise how difficult and they are. And in such a, so close to the sideline as well. Yeah. Such a finite space to work with. So we are seeing, yeah, a lot of turnovers, but both teams are going for very, like, the, the degree of difficulty of their offence is just off the charts. Oh, great D. Cat Buxer. Restarts play straight away. Doesn't bother walking into the front of the end zone. Gets to her captain, Evie Miller. Not much happening upfield. Has to look laterally. Puts Just a bit down. rushed with that throw yep. there. There's not enough responsiveness from downfield cutters to the situation. They're just thinking, yep, normal standard offense. Not really good stall counts high. Brereton. Taking her time. Pick called in the middle, so. Someone's gotten in between Christina Van and her player. Look at Jen Woods at the front of the stack there. Dead center of the end zone. Look for the inside shot to her. Yeah, well read. Bucks are all over that one. Having a stellar defensive point, yeah. this one. All game. I've seen a few intercepts from her. Batiste has put that low and lets the audible sorry out before the disc has even hit the ground. Slipped out of the hands. Baldonado, Jessup. The balance on her throw is just... Serena Ho. Yeah, 10 from goal. Looks back to Jessup, but off balance there. So puts the disc towards the ground. Chile wanted it deep. They yep, wanted someone yep, to just yep, pick that up and just yep. absolutely bang it long, but it did not happen. Yeah, Miller's placed herself downfield now off to the left of screen. Batista's picked it up and uh, looks like Sue's come back to play behind the disc, so... Bit of a change in formation. This time, Miller gets off her feet to secure the catch. Latchel to Van. Inside to Batista. Now she's got a clear shot at the end zone. Looking to Buxer. Buxer's got... Oh, she wound up there. Yeah, she wound up there. I think Buxer was expecting it to go to the bottom, you know, the far left of the end zone. But I think there needed to be a bit of a deep breath before that throw. Yeah. So Jessup, Annie Jessup, one of my favourite players to watch, Jessup. Like, her throwing form is just incredible. Just Absolutely. It's very speedy as well. Yeah, very solid throwing base and just can get it out so clean. Yeah. Brereton. Chile employing a st uh, straight up mark, so trying to prevent any downfield movement. Making There's a go, call. Making them go lateral and 45 degrees on their throws, which is, you know, what's been generating turnovers for both teams, those kind so of... So, it seems like it was a foul downfield. Um, two players making contact, so that stops the play with the disc upfield. So, they're just trying to figure out when it occurred. Yeah. I think it was Serena Hodes in the centre middle of the screen. Oh, apologies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, whatever score count you're on, so like a foul fail. Yeah, so, yeah, coming in on store five. Yeah. Coming in on five. Mm. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Like, one look up field and then lateral. There we go. Jessup finds Ho and Ho just Slips straight through. out. They're doing everything right in terms of getting their body behind it, getting two hands to it, but just... Yeah, that there's just, just enough water on it. Yeah, enough friction on the disc that just slides straight through. Of course, the disc, 175 grams of plastic. So isolating again here, Simon. Yep, goodbye again, another two on one. Keep your eye on Sue, center of screen. She'll attack that space if it opens up. Buxer, great inside shot. That time it's Miller. Oh, <laughs> worth that bid. Like it's worth yes. going for that one. Yep, Jada Callahan threw herself at that one, and that was the right move to do because that close to the end zone line. Even if, if you try and play it safe, you're just playing into the offense hand. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So, Chaos then were trying to get to half. Couldn't couldn't do it. Yeah. Another fairly lengthy point, Simon. Yeah. So, um, oh, it looks like a timeout has been called. Yep. So, sure that's... I don't know which team called it. I think it may have been Chaos. Yeah. Um, because... You get three timeouts in a game of ultimate um, for the whole 100 minutes, um, but you can only use a maximum of two per half. Yeah. So Chaos haven't used one yet. 
May as well use it. Yep, momentum yeah. slightly swinging towards Chile's way, so why not? Why not call stop it, it? Stop it before it yeah. get, gets out of control. <laughs> yeah, we're ticking up to 42 minutes into the game, so we're running at about four minutes per point, um, which is a slowish game. Yeah, not the slowest we've seen. Of course, 100 minute time slots here, so I feel that like we'll hit score cap, which is 15 if we keep going at this pace, but as you see, that might be Dominique Elliott might be on the crutches there. Not sure. If, might be from another game, actually, so. Daniel Clint has been listening into the chaos timeout. We'll see what he has to say for us. Yeah, thanks, Simon. Uh, this timeout, just the purpose of a breather, it was a long point. They view this as important to punch it in for you, here for their offensive point and take half. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, just, as you said, Beck, a couple of really long points just need the break. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and as, you know, Chile were on a bit, starting to get a bit of pep-like, you could see they were getting around each other at the end of that point. So, yeah, Chaos want to take back control of the game. Both teams have relatively small rosters. If um, Chile have 16, Chaos have 17, you typically bring 20-plus to absolutely. a four-day event. So you don't run out of legs, but so... Yeah, both teams will use those timeouts, use whatever rest they can get. Amy Chang, you were over at the Chile side, uh, the Chile huddle. What do they have to say? The coach really pumping their players up and reminding them of mental and physical freedom, the freedom to do what they want and what they think they need to do to take this game. Good, strong messaging. I like Bruce, that. Bruce Hoyne, he's, yeah. yeah, he's a lot of energy as a coach. Very, very vocal, very up and about. As you see the... Uh, the mammoth hair salon on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad setup. Jess Chatterton. It's played all for a number of years, Jess, but this is her first Division One national, so it's great to see. It's not always just sort of young university players making it up to this level. It's players who have typically played just league or social level. You know, can make that can make that move if they want to. Great offense here from Chaos, taking it all the way down that far top sideline. Jen, oh. looks, there we go. That's the one she's been working for the entire game. That long shot to her advantage in the end zone. We're seeing a couple go over her head or fall short. And Brereton's just weighted that one perfectly. Just clean, crisp offense. And I think that timeout was worth a call. Absolutely. I think, yeah, I think they definitely saw that control was starting to slip. And it's one of those things that you make the call before it com you completely lose it and the uh, other team takes control. So that's going to be a half break because uh, Chaos have taken the lead at eight goals. We're going to throw down to Daniel Clanton. Um, Steph, great first half for Chaos there. You're out in front and looking good. Yeah, we're really excited. We're really excited to be here after not coming to Nationals for two years. So we're just feeling really hungry for it. And that's, uh, that's great to see. Um, I noticed out there you're, you're playing this hex offense. Um, tell us a little bit about how that transition's been and how the, the structures differ. We've been working on our hex offense for about two seasons now, and it's working really well for us. We love generating flow uh, in the under space, and that, so that uh, offensive structure really works well for our style. Um, yeah, it's, it's our standard offense, and we've been working on it. I feel really good about it. Yeah, well, it's certainly uh, giving you the results at the moment. I'll let you get back to the team, and thank you for, m very much for your time. Thank you. And we'll go back to you, Simon. All right, and Amy Chang's down there with Chile captain Evie Miller. Thanks, Simon. I've got Evie here from Chile, Melbourne. Evie, I was just listening in on the timeout chat by a coach, and he was really talking about freedom. What's that about with the team? Uh, yesterday we uh, had a really rough start today, we've got a really short roster and um, I think we got to the third game and I think we just realised that we just really wanted to play some good cricket and we just started running with that and we just now we're just playing cricket and we just want to have freedom and just I think that cricket just kind of encapsulates that and yeah, so <laughs> we're just having a good time and not letting the hard times get to us. Yeah, That's a great <laughs> philosophy to have, having a good time too. How do you think the team's finding the game so far in these conditions as well? 
Um, I think it's very new for us. Um, all season we've had pretty still nice conditions and not much rain in Melbourne. So this is very new, but it's a, um, it's a lot of fun. Easy to glide across the ground if we need to go for it. So yeah, we're just going to enjoy it for the rest of the game, I think. <laughs> Fantastic. And finally, you had 13 players yesterday. You've got around 16 today. Usually teams try to bring a little bit of a bigger <laughs> roster. How's the team finding that? Um, it's definitely difficult. Um, I think a lot of us are very sore from yesterday. Uh, we, a lot of us are playing three or four points in a row, um, but we're just making the most of it. Um, it's a lot of extra game time experience, so that's great. Um, but yeah, I think we've just we've lost a few players that we weren't expecting to lose, so um, it has been a bit tough. But we're but yeah, we're just making the most of it. Can't complain about extra <laughs> game time, Evie. Thank you so much. Good luck for the rest of the tournament. Thanks so much. Thank you, and Simon and Beck, back to you. All right, we're going to take a quick break for a couple of minutes. We'll be back with the second half soon. Back of the second. Oh, he's back. He's back. I wonder if that he's going to spook anyone today. Yesterday, he, uh, I think one of the players from I can't Outbreak. Remember, Outbreak yeah, actually had a collision <laughs> with that uh, particular kookaburra. So, a bit of a brave one. Obviously, enjoys his ultimate. Or she. <laughs> second half of ultimate underway. Spicy Chili 3, Chaos 8. The Vic versus WA matchup. Day 5 of the Australian Championships on KO Freebies. Zone defensive look from Spicy Chili here. Jessup Morrow and Callahan. They've worked it to this near sideline. This is where Spicy Chili want them to be, so they're going to have to break it away. Morrow puts it over the top to Jessup. And Jessup, bullet through the middle to Ma. Ma pointing at Brereton saying, you should cut there, mate. And Brereton obliges, but the defense is able to cover it. Morrow. Another hammer shot over the top to Jessup. There we go. Shot through the middle to Barrett. So interestingly, Chile were on that sideline. I could hear one of them screaming out, like, match. Like, time yeah. to go to match, time to go to match. But the players on field deciding to keep that zone in yeah, play. Right. So don't know if that was a message from a coach trying to pass that on or whether that was just a, you know, strategy of things like that. Because generally speaking, you'll hold that zone formation you know, really containing the disc to those people who are downfield um, up until probably about 
15, 10, 15 metres yeah. outside the end zone before you switch to a match defence because it can get really risky. As you can see here, there's, you know, players in the end zone that have just, or plays that are just completely free. Um, and it just allows for that. That confusion occurs often when you're in the end zone with the zone. And Sabrina Morrow playing on what you call the strong side. So the side that you're getting forced towards. The strong side handler needs to be good, be efficient at breaking it out through the cup. But Morrow uh, has been around the scene for years, can throw whatever she wants. Just pop those hammers over the top. Absolutely. It renders his own borderline ineffective if you've got a strong side handler who can just do that without being worried about it. And granted, during halftime, the rain really picked up. Yep. But as soon as we came back to play, it's still. Yep. No wind, no rain. And kind of mild. Yeah, so I don't know if the zone... sort of high teens, so... Surprisingly pretty comfortable to play in. Batista, again, going for that 45-degree throw to the advantage of Goodbye, but Goodbye sort of circled her cut a little bit rather than a sharper change of direction, so... Couldn't get that acceleration. Baker. Giving instructions to her team of where they need to be setting up. Clear instructions. She said about four words and they all moved. <laughs> just... I mean, when Karen Baker tells you to do oh, something, you, you, you do, do it. it. <laughs> Good grab. Fantastic grab by Ma. Baker, a rare mistake. I think she was already thinking about what she's going to do when she's got it. Batista. Long look upfield. Finally looks for Sue. Just a little nice jab step to get free. Sends a bullet out looking for Buxer, but... Buxer Great did, bid. Did much, everything she could like she thought. All right, inbounds. Got to get out wide. Got to do everything, but... Such a risky throw. Like when you're throwing to a sideline-ish cut in the back corner of the end zone. It's just your, your chances. It's a very... High risk, um, yeah. and and there's like you know such a pinpoint needs to be such a pinpoint throw. Um, you know you would have maybe hit the middle there and get her to turn. <laughs> Challenges the defense though, so absolutely. Chai. Natasha May getting involved. Better the ones to call her name, but she's playing behind the disc now, and this time. That's fired away. I think Chaos are taking, uh, getting a few different names playing behind the disc at this point. Maybe sort of feeling they've got a bit of a lead here, so they're well in control. So let's give our main players a rest, give everyone else involved for a bit. And then I had to circle back for that one. She's called a foul on Steph Ma there. Ma said, yep, that's fine. There was contact that stopped you from having to play at it, so she'll accept that call. So Julia Kabai will get possession. Designing out where they were when the foul happened, not necessarily when it was called before they restart. Steph Ma checks in to play Van. On the corner now. Cut leading towards her. Oh. No, she's got oh, it. She got it. She's got it. I couldn't see it with the angle on the screen here, but that's amazing. I was like, oh no, she's just throwing that to where she wants her to be. Oh. And... With two defenders in there, it wouldn't have been hard for that Chaos defender at the back there just to double back and get enough on it. But I think I think what that defender did, though, was did see it coming. But if thought if I go in, I'm going to call some fair hairs. Absolutely. I can just going to let it go with it. So initial foul here. As we see again, I think it was... Oh, no, Such bacon. a... See it. Wow. Yeah. Such a great grab. Such a great grab. Like, the, to get on the ground like that is un unreal. Yeah. And again, we've been saying it. Chase everything. Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. You don't know what you can get unless you go for everything. Now, that would have put a bit of fire in spicy chili's belly. Yeah, hopefully gives them a bit of a spark they need. Not to say they'll completely fart, but, you know, just a, a move like that can get you... If you're on the sideline feeling it's cold, it's wet, we're down. Ugh. But you see a teammate make a play like that, you sort of get, ooh, okay, well. Yeah, body language change, yeah. mentality changes a little bit. If she's willing to do that, she, yeah, I better get out there. It. If she can do it, <laughs> I can do it. So Chatterton puts that pull right on the sideline. They've only got about half the field to defend. Looks like they're going zone again. Yep, Morrow taking her time. She'll play that strong side role again, but this time getting pinned to that high side. 
They're keeping that hex formation, so easy passes backwards and lateral. Woods, a couple of fumbles. Right idea getting in there. Yep. Generate that quick movement to create the space. Unfortunately, just could not keep her hands to it. This time Sue taking her time to get to it. Um, just too much to have to read back, reach backwards. Jess have sent this one up. Elizabeth Chen getting involved over Ma. Brereton's found space. Puts it over the top. Marais charged down the field. Sees an opportunity to get her name on the other side of the scorecard, not just assists. Smart of Chaos there to do the quick pick up and go straight away. They did not want to have that zone put on again. Yeah. So they thought, you know what? We got it now. Let's just run with it because they're going to be trying to make decisions. Chili here are going to be trying to make decisions about do we put the zone on? Do we go to match? What's going on? So very smart by them. And the difference between what we saw earlier is when Chili did it, it was just the throw making the decision and there was just no responsiveness downfield. That time, Jessup went just got it and all her teammates are going, oop. Yep, let's go. <laughs> get our skates on. Get out of here. <laughs> and by then, you know, Chile, they'd made their decision to go match, but they just couldn't playing chase up, catch up the whole time. Yep. So Chaos said, all right, Chile, you've shown us a little bit of what you got. This is what we've got. Yep. So the score's 10-4 to the advantage of Chaos. I'm not ready to say this game's over. We've seen teams go on five, six goal runs. That's true. There's plenty of time in level. still yeah. in this uh, match as well. So we've still got like 33 minutes left. Yeah. That's enough to definitely do the catch up. And it's always at nationals when it happens. Always. <laughs> but it starts by making sure these offensive ones. Christensen, Batista. Run the split stack again. Plenty of space in the middle. Goodbye. Having a brilliant game. First year player. Buxer. Goodbye. Just oh. Right idea. Just again, just would have worked day one with fresh legs, but as the tournament wears on, you've got heavy legs running through heavy ground. You can be half a step off, and those throws that you've practiced 100 times at training don't quite land anymore. Brilliant shot by Chai. Looking for. Sue Francois. Just sneaks it over the line. Yep. Took it, like, didn't go directly to it. Thought, if I just let this go a bit, yep. I can get close to that line. And as a coach, if you see a player do that, it's like, you better catch it. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very true, very true. Yep. So, Chaos are just figuring out there what they were going to do. But... Oh, such a nice throw. Look at that. So that's what Chile's been trying to do. Yes. But they unfortunately just haven't been able to pull it off. Just Chaos defense is just clogging up all the throwing lanes because they have seen that Chile aren't really looking to prioritize lateral movement to spread them out. Absolutely. And you need to start doing that. You need to go lateral like... Swing once, it across once, a couple once, of times. Once, yeah. Once. Just spread Open the up the field. Yeah, spread the defense out a little bit. Don't let them be comfortable. As soon as the defense is comfortable, you're in trouble. Yeah. Then they feel, okay, we know what you're doing. Now we can add extra effort to what we're doing rather than worrying just about tracking you. Absolutely. As we hear the second whistle indicates that that's 60 seconds since the last goal, which means offense have to have their hand up. And the pool goes up. Batista, Christensen. So, Chaos taking a bit of time to get down onto the disc then, Simon, yeah. which gave Chile got, got a few metres. Batista puts that long shot up. Baker versus Miller. Great, great, great trailing edge grab by Miller. He's got Davey on her own. Better offence, much better offence. Much better offence, but some of those throws, Simon... <laughs> What? That last one was, was a little bit, little bit of angle that was maybe unnecessary to a player that's completely on their own. I don't draw pictures on the scoreboard deck. The goal's <laughs> a goal. All right. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice work, Chili. But again, Good like, if, if Davey's completely unguarded, oh, the yeah. throw can be messy. Like, yeah, that's you know, true. You, that is you, true. Just, whatever gets it to her will work. The perfectionist in me does not like that. <laughs> <laughs> But I like that Chile's taking those long shots. Yes. I think that that's, that's, that's the bit of the aggression that we needed to see from them. It'll be so easy for them to have gone, like, 
retreated back into their shells a bit and gone, Absolutely. okay, we need to just go play safe, boring, ultimate now. It's gone, no, no, stick with the plan, stick with it, keep at it. We've practiced it all season. We know it works. Yeah, absolutely. And I think also Chaos thought that they had Chili's bit figured out. Just like, oh, they're going to play it safe. They're yep. going to just, you know, dink it around with their throwers a little bit. Yep. That'll be fine. We've got the first couple of passes before we have to sort anything out. Yeah. And Chili just throwing something a bit different, and it's stuck. So it's Chili's first go on defense for some time now. So a strong defensive line out there. Morrow to start play. Gone with match this time, Simon. Yep. Ma, uh, Jessup. Jessup's got a couple going away. Puts it. She's wrong-footed her teammate. <laughs> oh! Like that second attempt. Yep. So Serena Hoshi. Yeah. It was going to one side of her. I thought she'd cried a wrong-footed her, and she she had it drifted, but basically turned the other way. I think also very smart by um, Foster. Foster there to, to jump, which go kind early. of forced her yep. to go. Have to go early. Foster looking for Phillips. Can't quite get to her. Pointing to where she wants the cutters to go, to this near side, which opens up space for Beninka on that high side. Great high catch. She's got Venetia Chan one out deep, but can't get a safe throw out. So it plays a 1-2 with Foster to move it to centre field. Foster's got a couple long, but... Yeah, those cutters are drawing the defenders out, which allows these 45-degree angle to attack. But Nicole Ma think, saw that one coming from a mile away. I and think also uh, Mickey and uh, Kate there just having eyes for each other. Yeah. And that last pass from Mickey there, there was an open player right yeah. in the middle of the field that she did not even look at. And that but would have been where Nicole Ma peeled off from. So absolutely. They've telegraphed their plot. They've shown their hand. We know what they're doing. So if I just come out here and pressure it. Jessup. Oh. Nicole Ma with a clap. <laughs> We've seen enough players do that that, you know, it's not an isolated problem. Co. To Phillips. Better movement here. Still attacking down this near sideline. Boom. Now looking inboard. Finds Sue. Nice little one two movement there. They're not cutting away from Ong, but she. Had to throw that. Would have been a high count. She didn't have a lateral option. So as soon as she's presented with that one option, you have to do it, even though it is a tight space one-on-one. -on -one. And Nicole Ma just had that inside angle and knocks it away. I'm enjoying this uh, Foster v. Ma. Yeah, battle. it's a good That's matchup. Great one-on-one. -on -one. So we see them. Ma's taken off down the bottom left oh. of the screen, but there's a run-through intercept by Beninka. Sue. Looks high side, picks cold, but that turnover will stand. But I like that they're looking across field yes. now. That's changed uh, Chili's game a little bit. Jessup. Got Jem Woods heading long. Got Francois short. No, sorry, that's Baldonado. Back to Jessup. How much actually can happen upfield? There's still... Fatigue's starting to set in, so Cutters are still moving away. And, yeah, we're, we're going to start to see errors like that start to creep their way to this game as we, we're... Oh, we're over an hour. We're 65 minutes in. We're going to see throws that would have stuck in the hour ago. Just going to have enough variation on them that's just untidy. So you can see again there, Chile, all their players moving away from the disc, which creates room for this attacking cut from behind. Foster has to leave her feet. We're seeing that same cutting pattern, aren't we? Yep. It's becoming a bit predictable now. And yeah, even... And Carson is able to crowd that near sideline and put pressure on it. Baldonado. Morrow. Urging players to come towards her. Great little one-two move. Bang, sends the disc long. Jen Woods underneath it. Foster oh. has to oh. go to... Oh, no. She's... Jen Woods was sitting duck underneath it, and when you got uh, two defenders closing in on you, one from either side, you just kind of sit there and hope for the best. And Foster got a solid hand to it, but not enough to change the flight. And that's that experience there from Kate Foster as opposed yeah. to Phillips, who, who you know, Kate knew to get in there, just get in there and get, get the jump up early, whereas uh, Phillips was kind of hanging back a little bit waiting. So we have a timeout called.
Yeah. Um, I think, again, this will be just for a breather. Um, that was another fairly lengthy point. Yeah, and we mentioned those fatigue mistakes are starting to set in. As we see that throw again from Morris, she instead of trying to put a like bullet out, she thought, I'm just going to sit it up there. I don't want to overshoot her. I'd rather have it float than put it out the back. So, Absolutely. But so. That's absolute trust in Woods just to go, right, I know you're one on two here, but we've got you. <sighs> oh, Foster. <just> Always. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. I mean, she's smiling because, you know, what can you do about oh, it? Absolutely. You've done what you can. <laughs> it's not like you did anything wrong. Just sometimes the disc just doesn't like you. Yeah, for sure. Now we've got Amy who's on her way back from listening into the chaos uh, little chat that happened in that time out there. So we're going to head over to Amy to hear what the message was. I was listening to the chaos timeout. Brereton telling her players that they should be really hungry and hunting on defense. Mm. Yeah, that's a bit of a classic WA thing, isn't it? They're yeah. always that really like they love they love that aggressive like style of ultimate. Not not uh, unnecessarily yeah. aggressive, but really playing attacking, playing hard, every not, point at hundred percent. And not letting off, not going with Absolutely. seven goals up, let's cruise this home. It's like let's keep going at it. Yeah, for sure. And Daniel was over listening to the spicy chili timeout. What was the message there? Yeah, Coach Quinn, uh just asking uh, his offense to go more vertical at the moment. Their cut's very sideways. He's wanting more verticality, more up and down the field, and try and create some separation that way. Good change, good adjustment. Yeah. That's probably what they need at the moment. Absolutely. So we see the defensive line out there for Chaos. They whole new line on here, so fresh players. Expect early pressure on the first pass here as we see Ma. Sorry, that's winds it up, pulls it, fielded in bounds by Christensen there. Just wanted to get it moving rather than take the brick. Here we go, Batista takes a long shot up, looking for Kabai, but they've had to run a lot through her today, and you can see the pace wasn't what it was an hour ago. So and look, I, I like those looks from Chile. They're not yeah. coming off yet, yeah. but they will. Yes. They will. You know, we've spoken to the team. They've said they're a bit of a development team. This, they know that this year is a building year. Okay. Oh, Buxanelli gets a fingertip on that. Would have been a clutch block at this point. And Evie Miller right on the hip of her player there. Plenty of pressure on now. The only... There's a good long look upfield. Looks lateral. Finds out where all her team's situated. Finds Ma. Uh, not interested in moving her pivot feet around, just shifts the weight. Main. And there we go, Buxer with that run through D. She was working she's hard. Yeah, it was going to happen at some point. And she's gone for the high release flick. Hands yeah. on head. No, straight away wasn't a good call. Baker's picked it up, sent it. And Leone right on the doorsteps, finds Francois. And again, because Baker rushed to pick up the disc. All the cutters just went. Yes, <laughs> just absolutely. Very responsive, very I would reactive. Do the same. Yes, <laughs> not sort of waiting to go right. Well, our our play is to set up here and then decide. It is. Oh, Karen's got the disc. If I want a goal, I should run towards it. Absolutely, Bucks's defense. She's yeah. gotten. I I reckon we're you know we're, we're up to six or seven. Yeah, I six yeah. or seven man D's that she's managed to get for sweet chili. Yeah, spicy chili. Sorry. Oh, she's just got such a great awareness about her. Yep. Player for the future, still under 18 years of age, has a couple of years of experience. Aren't they recruiting for the juniors team at the moment? Maybe <laughs> uh, <laughs> someone should give that woman a call. Yes. <laughs> I, wouldn't I wouldn't even tell her about Trias. I'd tell her where the first <laughs> training camp is. <laughs> a great attitude as well. Um, Bucks her, even though she's, she's a young player, she knows she's not getting ahead of herself. She's happy to sort of play for a club where she's not, you know, heavily leaned on as a player, where she just can do her thing and just let the let the development happen Absolutely. naturally as it comes. Chatterton to feel the pull. Takes her time. Nice and calm to Sue. The two cutters coming towards her, which is dangerous territory, so it looks back to Foster. Foster's got Ung on that high side. He's putting in the yards. Oh. Side shot to Phillips. 
Steps around, gets a magnificent break throw backhand out to Medinka, who takes it early. She's right on the line now. Got a couple of options here. She's got Chatterton, she's got Chan, she's got Oom. Goes backwards to Foster, who also on the line. Jess Chatterton gets her goal. Give Phillips the disc more. <laughs> if that's what we're going to see from her, what what have you been doing? Come Anna, on, guys. Mate. <laughs> what? Why'd you wait till now to show us you can do that? Get her out of the downfield. We don't want her as a receiver. Put her in the with the disc. If that's not the type of throw that she can sit up, oh, that's what we want to see. And again, that that throw is that is hard. Oh, definitely <laughs> hard. You've got to get low and wide and get it around the defender. And to put it up to the advantage of a team out on that side, that was a solid um, 35, 40 minute throw. Like that's not. As a newer player, to have the confidence to do that and to be able to execute it on a live stream yeah. at Division your first ever Division One Nationals, like, she's got the skills. Is she under 19 as well? <laughs> 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 Let's just put this team together. Yeah, all right. Here we go. <laughs> of course, the Australian under 20 youth teams will be playing in the Trans-Tasman Series later this year against New Zealand. That'll be exciting. Yep. We'll definitely be tuning into that. Yep. Great pull by Evie Miller. Cast really taking their time to look at Cardillo's oh. overcooked that one. Oh, well, we're seeing the calm down there. <laughs> Vicky Sue just, let's take our time, gang. Let's get the heart rate down. Bucks has lost her feet in the end zone there. Goodbye's found space. Sue up the line. Five minutes from goal there. Really crowded space. Oh. Goodbye. What a grab. And there we go. There's the connection. Those two have been had a few attempts at and have now made it cleanly. There was absolutely no chill from the coach on the sideline. <laughs> Bruce was <laughs> yelling all sorts of instructions to his team right there. But obviously they've listened. Yeah. Seems like uh, shoulders are back a little bit now on Chile's side. They're a bit, yeah. bit more excited, a bit more into this game. But the, I feel like the sideline is a bit more engaged yes. now. Yes. You can make a difference between if there's just seven out, seven of you out there trying to, um, almost like Grand Slam tennis players, where they can't have a coach speak to them. They're just sort of out there on their own. But the difference between that and then having an engaged sideline yelling information, encouragement, instructions, it can get you up and about because it means you have to think less and you can just go and do it. Especially we heard from Chile the yesterday, they had a couple of really tough games. Um, and so... Three games in a day at Division One level is hard on the legs, hard on the body, particularly for day one. Yep. So um, having a sideline that can feed you energy onto the onto the field. So if they're up and about, their adrenaline is pumping. Yeah. Often, you know, you hear someone yell your name and you're like, oh, yeah, better run. So that could be very useful. Movement from Jessica Morrow against this zone. Just looking to try. The zone's looking to try and contain them to the middle of the field, but Jessup just stands where there's space. She's not sort of even like moving at a breakneck speed. Just getting to where there's no defenders and just getting a throw to say, just get it to me. Barrison doing the same kind of thing, and there we go. Gap through the middle. Jada Callahan. And you don't need to rush it once you've broken through that. You just go back to your throwers, repeat, rinse and repeat till you're at the goal line. Brereton and Morrow just drifts out wide, spreads the defence out. And there we oh. go, finds Jen Woods in the corner. I liked that zone look, though, from Chile. We hadn't seen that one yet this game. Um, yeah. And it did slow it did down. down. It, I think had they started using that a little bit earlier and they tightened it up, it, it kill, could have used them. Worked in their favour. It kills the long. It kills the the long throw. Absolutely, and it, and it makes them throw more. And yeah. when they're with more throws, yeah, increasing chance of turnover. But again, the just the responsiveness of chaos to what they've got in front of them is just a one. Just to not go. All right, well, this is a bit of a different look. So we just change how we play a little bit. Yeah, and just yeah, we see we saw a Callahan do it brilliantly. We saw Jessup do it. We saw. I think it was Baldonado when they're doing it. Um, just don't run around mindlessly. 
stand where the defenders aren't. Yep. And you don't back need to throws. move much when yeah. there's a zone. Just, you know, you can walk and create space. Yeah. Trust that your throwers will find you at some point. Absolutely. So 14 7. So Chaos, this they they are on defense. Yes. But so score target 15, first 15 wins. I would like to see Spicy just get a couple more in just to just to get their spirits up and just give them a bit of energy to take into their final pool play game. So we've got about 13 minutes left of playing time. 23. Not oh, 23. Can't count. <laughs> Like I'm a school teacher. <laughs> a hundred minute cap. We mostly lead up tournaments. Oh, that's oh. over the reach. Oh. Oh, Miller has kept that alive. Love that. That's time to adjust the hat. Van, great moving up the line. Bit of a loopy throw. Not to her advantage. There was and something else happening oh, downfield. So both of the players just making contact with each other. They're just discussing, I think, whether or not that affected the play that was occurring. Yeah, and so I think it was Targa. No, sorry. Just, yeah, retracted the call because the turnover happened anyway. Try it was, sorry, in the end. Great catch, great throw. This could be it. And there we go, Francois with, I think, her third or fourth goal. Win the game. To wrap this up. And that's Chaos's first win at a national championship level since 2019. Of course, they haven't been to one since 2019. But still, it's great to... Had that effort reward, and we heard Steph Ma before saying that, yeah, they've trained for two years. Like they, have, yeah. they didn't just take a break. They kept, kept their club going, kept practicing, kept playing. And that relief when that effort is finally gets rewarded with a victory. And they're not out of contention yet. Obviously, with pools of six, the top four going through to bracket play at the end of it. Absolutely. And just two wins in pool play. So... That, that's that's number it's one. Pretty sim pretty simple formula for chaos yep. for the remainder of pool play. Keep winning. Keep it WA contention. they normally do this, don't they? Yes. They just somehow scrape <laughs> it through, and I love it. I think it's so good. Yep. We're gonna head down to Daniel Clinton, who's got a player from the winning team for a chat. Yeah, here with one of the MVPs, Sue Francois. That's an excellent game, uh, Sue. How do you go about your training and preparing for nationals? Um, I spend quite a lot of time in the gym um, with. Uh, Sam, who's my older brother, plays for Supply. Yeah, you would have heard yesterday him promoting the strength code and everything that has to offer because he's been training the Sublime Ultimate Club and the Chaos Ultimate Club. So I spent a lot of time there, a lot of time on the field with the team, a lot of time doing fitness. There's a lot that goes into, into it, yeah. And how did you get involved in Ultimate? Sam got me into it, yeah. <laughs> Sam yeah, again. He's been asking me over and over and I finally, finally said, yep. Well, <laughs> well, you're an excellent pickup for this Chaos team. Congratulations on the thank victory you. and thank you for your time. We'll head over to Amy Chang. Thanks, Daniel. I've got Sabrina Morrow with me here from Chaos. Sabrina, congratulations on the win. Uh, with the Sublime team from WA, it seems like we haven't seen a Perth team for a while. How does it feel to get your first win of the tournament? Yeah, it feels really good. Uh, it's nice to have it on live stream as well so that the family back in WA can um, watch it at the same time as we're playing. So it's really good feeling and at least we know we can leave the tournament with one win. Yeah, that's great. And Chile were throwing up a couple of different defensive looks. We had match, we had zone. We saw you really calmly working through their zone and directing your players. There's a lot of trust in your receivers that you have, don't you? Uh, we've been playing together for a while. We trust each other. Um, and I love a zone because someone is always open. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And finally, what's the strategy going into the rest of the tournament? Um, I don't want to give away too many secrets. We've been uh, playing a hex this season, which is a, uh, to us, it's a very different offensive strategy. I think um, we just want to play our best game that we can and hopefully uh, weather sometimes is a good equaliser. I think we're a pretty strong team in the wind, so we're hoping for it to get a bit windier. Yeah, there was definitely a bit of wind and rain today. Sabrina, good luck with the hex. Congratulations on the first win and uh, good luck at the rest of the tournament. Thanks for your time. Beck and Simon, back to you. Thank you, Amy. How great is that? Love, you know, yes. a shout out to the people back at home because they, they haven't been able to watch yeah. their, their, you know, their family members, their girlfriends, their partners. Mm. They haven't seen them play against non-WA teams for yeah. a very long time. So it's great that KO has been able to um, give us this opportunity yeah. to be able to share it. It's unreal. And of course, KO giving you the entire championships as a freebie. So thanks to everyone who's tuned in and... Uh, Plenty of other sport available on KO as well if you want to upgrade. Absolutely. <laughs> but, um, 
the AFL, the NRL, the supercars, the Formula One, and the Super Netball. I've been getting into that. I love the Super Netball. Yeah, I, I, I love, yeah. <laughs> I've got my KO membership, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so well, thank, thank you for joining us this game. This afternoon, we've got an open division double header, the last two rounds of pool play, and we've got two games that will determine who's going to make the top bracket. We've got Mammoth from Queensland playing IBM out of Newcastle. That's at 1 p.m., that's in 40 minutes' time. And then at 3 p.m. in two hours and 40 minutes, that'll be Craig out of Wollongong versus Juggernaut from Melbourne. That is going to be an absolute belter of a game. Yeah, some exciting games up. Absolutely. So keep tuning in. Yep. So stick with us on KO Freebies for international viewers on altivids.com. And we'll be back in about 40 minutes with the next game.